Okay, so welcome to this short video on how to download data from the internet and um, then manipulate it just a little bit. This is going to be one of many um, little tutorials, if you will, in Excel. <coughs> so first thing you're going to want to do is uh, get on a browser, and I just went into Google and I typed in Yahoo Finance, and that brought me to this page. And for this homework assignment, I'm interested in Apple, so I typed in Apple up here in this search line. Extra P there, so let's fix that. And then it should come right up with um, right here, Apple. So this gives me the current information on Apple, but this homework problem asks for the historical prices. So I'm going to go right over here and click historical. But this is defaults to daily, so I'm going to change that to monthly because I don't necessarily want daily, and then I don't want that much data, so I'm going to change this from uh, 1980 to uh, 2010, and I'm going to have it be December 1st. Now, what this gives me is this data set starting with September 1st, 2015, and going all the way back. Now I'm scrolling down, and if I wanted to look at this here, I would have to keep clicking next, 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 etc. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to click this download to spreadsheet, because then I can manipulate it so much easier. So I'm going to click this button. It's going to default to downloading it in comma-separated values. So you can either change that here, or you can just download it like this, up and then get it into Excel, and then change it. And that matters because it won't show up um, in your viewfinder if, if you're not aware of that. So um, I have already downloaded this, but let's just go ahead and click it on Apple uh, stock prices. And um, notice that when I click this down arrow, I can only download it as comma-separated values. So, again, this is just an important thing to note. I'm going to hit save, and it's going to tell me that it's already there. But <clears throat> if I was to go to my finder and look for this spreadsheet, it's not going to be there unless I'm looking at all files. So it shows up here because this is all files, but if I went into Excel, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be there. So if I'm here and I go to open and I go look where it should be, it's not going to show up there. That's because it's a comma separated file. And you know, I just don't I don't want you to get this far and say I can't find the data, you know, I downloaded. So here we are with our data and I'm going to use this to teach you a variety of Excel sort of basics, and you can you know, take that for what it's worth. But the homework assignment asks you to create a table. So essentially what you have here is a table. In my mind, it's a table that has a little bit too much data because we've got monthly stock prices for the last five years for Apple, and we have all these different formats, and we've got you know, all these decimals, etc. So the first thing I would do when I would look at something like this is I would get it all in a similar format because I can't stand you know, looking at all these decimals. So I might highlight this and then hold down the control shift and the down arrow and that will highlight my whole segment of information and go up here and change my decimal. So start by increasing it and then decreasing it down to say one decimal. And that just cleans it up nicely and centering it probably. And then another thing I would do is for this exercise we're really only interested in the closing price. We've not s All of this other stuff doesn't really matter to us. Um, so you might delete these columns, you know, whatever. Um, for now, I think we'll keep the volume and we'll just to give us more data to work with and we'll hide these. So I right click and I hit hide and now I've got a little bit more manage manageable 
group of data here. And because volume really can't be in decimals there, I'll probably just go ahead and get rid of that. Again, I have to highlight it the same way and um, get rid of those decimals because I, I don't really care about it. And because it's volume or numbers of, of something, I think uh, my preference would be to have it with some commas in it. So I click on this comma and again I'll get rid of the, the zeros. And to me that just makes a little bit more sense. So we're looking at the data and what we want to do is create subtotals. And I can creating subtotals is relatively easy, but we need some definable characteristic. And what I'd like to have is subtotals by year because that seems useful to me, or averages by year. Um, but in order to do that, we have to do a little bit of manipulation with Excel uh, in order to get the year to come up because we won't be able to do subtotals with it the way it is because it only allows us to subtotal by a whole column. So we wouldn't be able to subtotal by year because Excel doesn't understand um, that one September 15 is different from um, 14 or 13. So just trust me, it won't work. So we're going to first unhide our um, cells there and we're going to insert four cells. So um, I'm right clicking as I am coming up with this stuff. And now I'm going to highlight this column and I'm going to go up here to text, first data, and then text to columns. I'll click on that. And it's going to give me a little box where I can choose if I wanted to do delimited, which in this case I want to because I want to choose the character by which I separate the column. So um, I'll go to next, and then here you're, it'll probably have comma clicked on yours, but you're going to need to click other. And then I just typed in a forward slash because that's how I want, um, excuse me, I'm going to type in a dash. It did have a forward slash, I changed the format of it. If yours still has a forward slash because that's how it was downloaded from um, Yahoo Finance, then you can just put a forward slash there and it will work the same way. And then hit next. Uh, let me see here, I think maybe it wants me to put that, okay. So a forward slash either way, next, and then this is what we're after right here, but you may not see that when you click finish. Indeed, I don't see that, and that's because of the format of the cells. So what we're going to do here is highlight these cells, and we're going to change the format of them, and that should come back the way we want. We're going to change it to a number format. But now you notice that so we've got years and we have the day and the month. We don't really care about the day and the month and then we have the original date back here. So we're going to just change the heading of this column to year and this one to day. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of these two extra columns and go back ahead and, and hide these because we don't really need to mess with them. So now what I'm going to do is create some subtotals so that I can actually do something with this data because right now it's it's kind of cumbersome the way it is. So I'm going to go to up here to this tab called data. You're probably on the home tab now so you're going to want to go over here click data and that's going to give you a whole uh, slew of choices. So I'm going to slide this over so you can see this subtotal and I click on subtotal and it's going to say oh you dummy, you forgot to highlight what you're interested in. So we're going to go back over here and we're going to highlight. Um, once again, we'll do the top row. We'll hit shift, control, and the down arrow, and that will highlight all of it for us. And now we'll go into subtotal, click subtotal, and that's going to give us this box. And what I am interested in is adjusted close and volume. Those are the two things I'm interested in. I want it for each change in in year, right here, not date, that's why we had separated those out. And I don't want it to sum, because I don't want you know to know the sum of the stock prices over the year. I want the average. So I'm going to click average. And it will put those in for me when I hit OK. Let me just slide it over. And now you can see 
I've got the average for 2015, the average for 2014, 2013, etc. So now what I want to do is just copy my averages over so I can make a little graph because that's you know what I asked you to do in the problem. So <clears throat> we can collapse this down, but another way to do it is to just highlight what we're interested in, that first row, then come down here, hold down the control key, highlight there, come to here, highlight again holding the control key down and then hit control C roll back up and just we're just going to place it right here paste special we want to place just values we don't if we hit um, this paste then we run the risk of not getting the right numbers so we're going to paste values and in many cases we end up with garbage so let me just slide this over here for you and indeed we've got some kind of garbage looking numbers there and that's just because of the format so we'll go to home and we're just going to change that so we've got the commas in there so volume makes a little more sense to us and again we've got all these decimals so we're going to get rid of those because we don't need all those decimals we'll get it down to one and let's go ahead and label it this is uh, average stock price annual average stock price and then this is um, annual or, excuse me average uh, vol volume So now <clears throat> we can go ahead and make our graph if we want. A couple more things I, I like to do just because I'm, I'm, you know, whatever. I have my ways of doing things. I like it. I always like it to go from the lowest here to the highest here. Really, it doesn't matter, but that's the way you read is, you know, from left to right. So I, I'm going to want to reverse this. So I'm going to slide this over because it's kind of in my way. And I'm just going to retype 2015. 2014 and excuse me 2014 and you notice with Excel here's just another trick for those of you who don't know you can highlight the two cells grab this green box and pull it down and it will count for you now in this case we're only at five years it doesn't really matter but you know sometimes if you got to count a bunch of years that's a helpful thing so what you do is you get two numbers typed in and then you just grab this green box and it will just keep on going if you if you were interested so we'll go ahead and delete those and now we've got it in year order which is what we want but we want to reverse I want to reverse it again you don't have to but I want to so I'm gonna go up here to sort which is gonna be on the home screen right here sort and filter and I want it to be smallest to largest so now I have it smallest to largest. I'm going to get rid of this just so I'm not confused. And um, we're going to put this up here year. And we're going to center all these nicely so they all look good. And I'm going to slide them just over here so they're sort of in the middle. Another thing I'd like to do, I'll just show you, is I'm going to wrap the text so that I don't have to make my cell so wide. So I'm going to go up here, click Wrap Text. And what it will do is it will allow the words to be kind of on top of one another, like this, average volume, average stock price. Just another thing to, to know about Excel. All right, so now we're going to make our graph. So uh, a little like the graph I had you do last night, this is a graph that is it's probably best depicted as a scatter plot. So when we make a graph, the first thing we do is highlight what we're interested in. And so we highlighted it, and we're going to go up here to insert, and we're going to choose the graph we want. So many of you last night chose this line chart, but you don't really want that. In this case, we want a scatter plot. So we're going to choose scatter plot, and we'll just pick this one because it's right there at the top. Now, <clears throat> the problem with our scatter plot is these numbers are are of very different scale right stock price is 
in you know whatever hundreds and this is in millions so we need to change one of the axes so the way we do this is we want to graph it so we've got volume on one axis and stock price on the other with years at the bottom so I'm going to move stock price to the right axis and leave um, volume on the left. So the way we do that is we click on these orange dots, any of them is fine, um, and we're going to right click and we're going to um, tell it that we want to format the data series. And when we click format data series, we get primary and secondary axes as an option and we want to change this to secondary and when we change it to secondary notice how it moves it this is a really important skill to have now the next thing we want to do is get rid of these decimals down here because you know we don't have parts of years so we're gonna click on that and um, and that's going to bring up this window over here that I need to get into the screen. So here we go. Now you can see it. And we want to uh, click on these little columns there. And we want the minimum to be 2011 and the maximum to be 2015. And it's going to keep on with these decimals until we go right down here and say um, right here number and that will give us the opportunity to change it um, I'm sorry um, I changed the unit here to major uh, and I changed the major unit to one and then that got rid of the decimals okay so now I got rid of the decimals and I've got I need to get rid of these decimals here so I'm going to click over on this and I'm going to go up here another thing I want to do is adjust the scale right now it's a little too high it goes up to 140 but really the highest number is 120 so we could change this to 122 and that'd be fine and the minimum doesn't really need to be zero it certainly doesn't need to be negative 18 because nothing really goes that low so if we change it to say 30 um, and actually I'm going to change this to 120 just to make it round. Um, this way we get a better magnification of what we're interested in by doing it this way and actually we could even go to 40 because I don't think it ever drops below 40 for the minimum. Then we'll slide down here to number and right now it's set at one decimal place and we want to just change that to zero decimal places because we don't really need any decimals for this and there we have it a little bit better. Over here we've already got a nice format where it's um, comma, there's no decimals, so everything is okay there. Now <clears throat> we might also want to add a trend line, so even though this data is a little curvy, I guess I should say, um, but we can go ahead and add a trend line, linear trend line, and you see what happens there, it'll just minimize the distance between the points and then we'll add a trend line here and and there you have it there is our apple graph and we might want to change the title and call it our apple graph apple um, graph of volume and stock And there you go. So there's another little tutorial on, you know, making graphs and that sort of thing. Um, and then finally, to insert it into Blackboard or insert it really into a lot of things, I have found the easiest thing to do is to use the snipping tool. And now if you're working on a Mac, it's not called the snipping tool. I think it's called the, the cutting. I'm not entirely certain, but there is a tool on a Mac. I am certain of that. So what we want to do is we want to save this diagram so we can insert it into the discussion board and Blackboard. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is, on my machine, it's the snipping tool. So I'm going to grab the snipping tool and I'm going to highlight what I'm interested in, which is my little thing here. 
And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to save it as a JPEG file so that it will work. And I'm going to give it a name and, and I'm going to call it the Apple Graph because that's what it is. And I already saved it once before, so I'm going to call it point one. And I'm going to put mine right on my desktop so that I can easily find it. And then I'm going to close out of it. Then on Blackboard, um, which I have open behind this, so let me just switch over there. So here I am in Blackboard. If I want to insert my JPEG document, I go to right here, this insert image, and when I insert my image, it gives me this, so then I have to find it on my computer, which is mine's on my desktop, so I click on that, Apple Graph, open, and there you go, it will insert, and it's asking me, are you sure you want to do this, because you already have one like that, but I want to, because I'm showing you how to do it. So, um, so you should be able to you know, do something like this. And then what you want to do is comment on what your graph found. So, as my example says, you know, it, this doesn't tell us everything except for that there does seem to be an inverse relationship between um, the number of shares traded and stock price. But, you know, we, we don't really know much beyond that. And that's all I want is just a couple of sen sentences to just you know have you go through the exercise of downloading the data doing something with it a little bit of practice and then I'd like you to comment on a couple other people's um, graphs and companies as well okay so I hope you found this interesting and informative um, have a great day see you soon